Hey everyone, it's the excellent dude again with another Excel how-to video. In this video, I'll show you how to set up a simple interactive dashboard in Excel. Dashboards are a convenient way to present a high-level summary of your data. I've created a sample set of data for a fictional fast food restaurant chain in the Source Data tab on my workbook. We'll begin by highlighting a cell in the data and create a pivot table by clicking on the Insert tab and then selecting Pivot Table. We'll simply click OK and it will create a new worksheet for us. I'll change the name of this worksheet to Sales by Year. Let's create our first pivot table. I'll select Sales as the value and then Year as the rows. I'm going to change the formatting so the information looks like dollar sales by selecting the currency format. I don't need the cents, so I'll remove them. It's good practice to name your pivot tables when you're building dashboards because you'll need to reference them for your slicers. To do this, I will highlight the pivot table and right click and select Pivot Table Options. I'll name this one Sales by Year. Next, I'll want to create a chart that I'll use on the dashboard. I'll click on the Insert tab and choose Pivot Chart. The first chart option that Excel shows me will work fine. I'm going to delete the title as I will make one on the Dashboard Worksheet. I'll also delete the legend as it's not really required. You'll see the grey buttons on the chart. We won't need them, so I'll delete them by right-clicking on one of them and choosing the Hide All Field Buttons on Chart option. Next, I'm going to create another worksheet, and we'll name it Sales by Month. We don't have to recreate pivot tables from the original source data. I'm going to use the one from our previous Sales by Year worksheet. I'll highlight it, copy with Control plus C, and then paste it with Control plus V into the Sales by Month worksheet. Now I can edit this pivot table to display the monthly sales. I'll move the year to the columns area and then drag the months into the rows area. I'll name this pivot table Sales by Month. I'll create a chart by clicking on the Insert tab and then select Pivot Chart. The first option that Excel shows me looks a little messy so I'm going to select a line chart with markers. Again, I'll remove the field buttons on the chart and resize it a little. Next, I'll create another worksheet and call it Sales by Country. Like the last worksheet, I'll copy the pivot table from the previous one we just made and paste it into the new worksheet. I'm going to remove the months from the rows and replace with country. And I'll name this pivot table Sales by Country. I'll now insert the next chart by clicking on the Insert tab and select Pivot Chart. The first option looks pretty good to me. Like the other charts, I'll use the Hide All Field Buttons on Chart option. On to the last worksheet. This will be called Sales by Product. I'll copy the pivot table from the Sales by Country worksheet and paste it into the Sales by Product worksheet. I'll widen the cells to fit the data. I'll now remove the country from the rows and replace it with product. I'll name this pivot table Sales by Product. I will now insert a pivot chart. The clustered column chart will work fine for this information. 
Again, like the other charts, I'll use the Hide All Field Buttons on Chart option. Now we are ready to build the Dashboard Worksheet. I'll create a new worksheet and name it Dashboard. I'll then drag the tab to the far left because personally I always like having the most important information on the left, but it's entirely up to you. I'll then drag the Source Data Worksheet to the far right as it's probably the least easily read information for the end user of the report. But then again, this is just my personal preference to keep things organized. I'll increase the magnification on the page to make things a little easier to see. I'll begin by giving this report a title. Fast Food Restaurant Sales Report. Now I can start copying the charts and placing them on the dashboard. I'll begin with the sales by year by highlighting the chart and clicking Ctrl plus C to copy it, and then Ctrl plus V to paste it onto our dashboard. I'll make it a little smaller by dragging the edges while holding the Alt key so the edges snap to the edges of the cells. Here's where I'll add the titles to the charts. This one is sales by year. And then I'll highlight the cells and choose merge and center. I'll select a blue fill with white bolded text. The next chart I'll grab will be the sales by country. Again, I'll copy the chart using Ctrl plus C and then paste with Ctrl plus V. I'll resize the chart area by dragging and holding the Alt key to snap to the cell edges to keep everything neat and aligned. I'll add the Sales by Country title and merge and center it. I will then change the font color and weight and fill color to match the other titles on this dashboard. I'll create the heading for the next chart which will show Sales by Month. I'll merge and center the title across the width of the dashboard as this chart will be wider than the previous two. I'll then add the fill and font colors to the heading. I'll copy the sales by month chart and paste it onto the dashboard. I'll resize the chart by dragging the handles and holding the alt key so the edges snap to the edge of the cells. Now the last heading, sales by product. I'll merge and center the same width as the chart above and update the fill and font colors. I will now copy the sales by product chart and paste it onto the dashboard. Again, I'll resize the chart by dragging by the handles and holding the Alt key to have the edges snap to the edges of the cells. We are now done with the charts for the dashboard. I'll quickly fix the main heading of the dashboard. I'll merge and center the text across the page. Change the fill color. Change the font color and weight. And then increase the font size to 20. I'll now add the slicers to the dashboard to allow users to filter the results on the dashboard. I'll begin by clicking on one of the charts and then click on the Insert tab and choose Slicers. For this dashboard, I'll select the year, country, and product for my filtering options. I'll now drag them to the left and resize them a little. Before the slicers will work, we need to make sure that the slicers are connected to all the pivot tables that were used to make the charts. To do this, for each slicer, we'll click on the Report Connections button and select all of the pivot charts and then click OK. I'll check the year slicer again to make sure all the pivot charts are selected. Looks good. Let me zoom out a little so we can see how the slicers will update the dashboard. First I'll select the year 2016 
and you will notice that all the charts have been updated based on 2016 data only. Now I'll try the year 2017. I'll undo the year filters and now try the country of Canada. Then the United States. I'll undo the country filters and now try to filter by products. I'll try hamburgers. And then try cheeseburgers. As you can see, creating interactive dashboards isn't too difficult as I was able to get this done in about 10 minutes. I hope you're inspired by this video to add interactive dashboards to your workbooks. If you find my videos informative, please give this video a thumbs up. If you like learning about Excel, please consider subscribing and clicking on the notification icon to be notified when I release new videos. Thanks again and have an excellent day.